Now, I've no doubt that many of you are already using laser technology. But traditionally, uh, forensic lasers have been quite large and bulky pieces of equipment. They're often um, laser boxes the size of a PC tower. Um, and then the light is directed through um, like an, a fiber optic light guide, like an umbilical cord. Now that does give you really powerful laser illumination, but what I'm holding in my hand right now is the crime light laser with a battery. Now, this is so similar to its LED counterpart, but we do have surgically precise, like two nanometer wave band um, illumination coming from the crime light lasers. So whereas the LEDs illuminate across a 50 nanometer wave band, the lasers will illuminate just that two nanometer wave band. Now, that can be really effective in hopefully precisely illuminating our evidence whilst minimising background illumination. Now, what's really, really clever about the crime light lasers is that the diodes in the crime light laser are class four lasers. They're extremely powerful lasers. And we actually have six of those diodes um, around the laser aperture here. However, However, the laser itself, the crime light laser as a product, is class 3B. Now that's because of the extensive safety features that we have implemented that mean that we still get that really powerful intensity of a class 4 laser, but with that safety and peace of mind of a class 3B laser. Now, in terms of safety features, um, the most obvious one is a physical bypass plug just at the base of the crime light laser that must be inserted in order to turn, uh, power the laser and fire it. Under the front of the crime light laser, we have a physical shutter that will physically open and close um, a manual block in front of the laser diodes. The laser is fired by pressing down this trigger under the front here. When the trigger is released, however, the laser will turn off. Now we can and do provide a means of overriding this for a laboratory environment. Um, the laser can be physically depressed using an accessory um, for more laboratory-based searching. And finally, in order to use the laser, there is a passcode in the screen of the laser that must be entered before we can fire it. So just over here, we can see an area of semen staining on this brightly patterned surface. Now, using the laser, we're able to exactly illuminate where the body fluid is fluorescing. And then if I move a little bit further up, we can see the difference that is achieved on a white background. So. Yes, there's a little bit of fluorescence coming from the fabric itself, but we can see this area of semen staining very, very clearly on this surface. And I don't have to be incredibly close. I can be a little bit further, but we can see just how intense that illumination is on this surface just here. So just here, we have a contaminated footwear mark. Now, the fluorescence coming from this is incredibly strong. And we've used the laser to induce the fluorescence in this surface. But it's very clear, this footwear mark just here. On this wall, we can see an incredible amount of finger marks. So if I just concentrate maybe on this area, we can even, in this one in particular, see pretty significant ridge detail and ridge clarity in that mark. But this is due to contamination on the fingerprint. So on the hand of the person that deposited the fingerprint, there was contamination. Now, whether that's foodstuffs, cleaning products, cosmetics, think about how often you encounter those um, uh, contaminants and how often your fingerprint probably is contaminated. We can use the very powerful laser illumination to try and maximize the signal that we get back from that contamination and minimize any interfering fluorescence from this painted surface that we have here.